Welcome back to Over the Horizon. Large areas along Florida's Gulf Coast have been devastated by Hurricane Helene that made landfall on the 26th of September as a Category 4 storm. More than 220 people are dead. Millions have been cut off without power and help or any means to communicate. But there's been one technology that's been saving lives and bringing help to those in desperate need. Scott Walter now joins me to share his own experience with this natural disaster and to explain why SpaceX Starlink satellite communication technology has been proving to be the vital backbone for communities devastated by Hurricane Helene. Welcome, Scott. It's great to see that you're in one piece and that your family is safe. You suffered some losses. We'll talk about that, but just help us understand. Tell us where you are and what you've yep. been experiencing and witnessing around you in these past few days. Okay, so I'm, I'm south of, of Tampa Bay uh, in the Sarasota area. And um, Helene, when it trucked up the coast, basically brought a pretty big surge of water along with it that was like higher than we've seen here in anyone's recorded memory. Um, so the storm surge is probably five to seven feet where we were, brought a lot of sand and everything else in just got worse as you went up. As you got to the big bend, they, they got it worse with a like 20 foot surge. And ironically, this storm only brought storm surge with it. It didn't really bring high winds because it was off the coast. I'm not sure a hundred you know, miles or a couple hundred miles off, but it was such a big system was able to bring in this, this huge surge. And we never experienced um, hurricane force winds where we were. We got to the big bend and we only got an inch of rain the entire time. Uh, in in our location down there in mm -hmm. central Florida, West Central Florida, um, all the rain bands were going over us, and you would have thought they would be dumping us. But those feeder bands basically kept feeding the storm, and unfortunately brought that large quantity of water to the Carolinas where they didn't expect it. So we got the storm surge, no wind, no rain. The Carolinas they didn't get the storm surge, but they got the the rain and the deluge and everything else, which just cut everyone off. So in our community, we were a, a bit shocked, but you know most people were able to recover a lot of a lot of damage to, to property. Fortunately, our property is up high enough that we just lost you know some items that were in the garage and nothing else. Um, but there was other things we, we we lost. We immediately you know water was cut off a day or two before just as uh, just to make sure it wouldn't be compromised by the system. So they, they always do that. That's another right. thing. It actually gets people to leave their houses because everyone will hunker down. But as soon as you say you're not having running water, then everyone starts to leave. Um, the power then went out. Of course, internet went out, a lot of other services like that. And it took them about four days before they would reopen the island up. And this is the thing to remember in a disaster area. Yeah. Even though people have good intention to come in and bring things in, the federal government in FEMA is not conspiring to prevent people from coming in. They are trying to save lives. Yeah. And if you go into an area where people are in trouble and you get in trouble and now suddenly the first responders have to take care of you because you thought right. you were going to be some sort of hotshot hero, you are not yeah. helping the situation. So I've been through this rodeo a few times on how things open up. There's misinformation yeah. out there and intentional disinformation. Yeah. I think that's a very important point you're in. touching on, Scott. You yeah. absolutely need to. So I've gone through here where the first couple of times – we could not come back on the island right away until the utility crews got in there to make sure all the power lines were that were knocked down were in order that residents would not get electrocuted when they get in or get hurt. So they go through these, these stages of, of opening up that you have to go through. And right now, we are still in a curfew where we are, and you need to be a resident to be here. And uh, you cannot be in the streets between um, midnight and 6 a.m. right now. It used to be that it was sunrise and sunset. No one was allowed out. So they slowly opened everything up and it wasn't until about Monday or Tuesday. And now, you know, we're in an area which is like, let's say, pretty good infrastructure, not heavily damaged compared to the Carolinas. And still, it's it's very, very tough to get in here. There's only one way to access. We've lost one of our routes um, because of things were, were washed out. And the um, and right now, I mean, the one thing that everything's come back on, but there's one thing that's missing to a lot of the people on, on uh, where I am right now. And that their internet's out. I'm the only one with internet. I'm coming to you with it because Starlink has made that possible. So yeah. this to show that it was not a big rainmaker here, 
normally if we get more than let's say one and a half to two inches of rain an hour at that rate, then we will we will lose connectivity for like a minute or two, something like that, until it subsides a little bit. And and I showed a, a live stream video where we got like a big deluge the other day, which was like up to four inches an hour. And it cut in and out a little bit, but it was still able to able to work. But during that storm, I lost a total of one minute. One minute. And as the storm surge was coming up, I was able to watch it on my ring cameras of exactly what was happening. I was just going up. No one else was able to do it because they had lost connectivity. And they still don't have it because it's just a very, very fragile system here uh, when it comes to yeah. So communication is vital for first responders and everything else when people are in yeah. trouble and desperate. And of course, the important thing is have it portable. So yeah. we've seen them bringing in a lot of Starlink dishes to the yeah. Carolinas. But there's going to just be one issue with that is I think a lot of those dishes are the bigger dishes and mm. um, they need a source of power. Yeah. So you, you need a pretty big battery backup for something like that or some electricity to be able to plug in. Yeah. And this is where the mini. Which again, if you have the entire Tesla's uh, battery and the solar ecosystem that you're set up, yep. Yep. it just goes to yep. show you how how vital Tesla and SpaceX's yep. technologies yep. are yep. in situations like yep. these. Yep. Yeah, so just, in the, in the yeah, community, I mean, it, was, it was very frustrating to get back on here, but it's because they are trying to protect life right. and property as best they can. So the first thing is you've got to let the professionals, the people know what's going on. If you are a person that is bringing assistance and you are credited or something like that, and you can prove it. They will definitely do it. They will escort you and they appreciate the help. But you got to remember that sometimes, you know, it might be the best of intentions, but you get in trouble and suddenly... You know, resources get diverted to take care of you when the best thing was that you need to work with the people that know what's going on. Because in many of these places, you have you're not familiar with the terrain. Yeah. You you don't even know what's what's been knocked out. Okay. Communication yeah. is very important to do that, uh, to be able to find and get the map together. So they are looking out for as frustrating as it might be. You might think there's a lot of bureaucracy, but a lot of those things are put in the reason. It, it's it's not a conspiracy that people are trying to prevent people from, from, from helping out, they do appreciate it. But remember, you can be more of a problem and a hindrance than a help if you really don't know what you're doing. So, so listen yeah. to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I myself, as a journalist and reporter on the ground, have been, um, I've seen firsthand um, what happens. I, I was witness to one of India's worst natural disasters in the state of Uttarakhand in the year of 2013 when they were mm -hmm. uh, this was in the foothills of the Himalayas and you had a cloud burst and there was a, an artificial lake that formed up in the the middle um, mm -hmm. ranges of the Himalayas and then ju that just, just burst. burst yeah yeah, yeah. and, and the, it just the, the amount of water that was released um and the first thing to go is infrastructure so you have telecom um you know, these, uh, all these towers that are washed away, roads are washed away. So it's, I, I would imagine that something very similar has happened there with, uh, in the aftermath. Yeah, part yeah, of the yeah, yeah. And exactly. And, and the thing is, remember is, is it's this implication factor that ends up happening in a valley. So right where I am, we had this, this big downburst, I think it was on, on Saturday that, you know, I, I recorded what was going on. Then it was surprising when I went out in front to see that not only the street was flooded, but it was like almost a quarter of my driveway again. And it's never got that high before, except we've had like an extreme high tide or a storm surge. Like even a high tide has never really got to that, you know, a, a spring tide or something like that. And that was just from about two inches of rain over what looked like about a half hour. Very flat area and surrounded by other areas that it's not like there was much way for water to feed in. So suddenly, in a short period of time, just that runoff from two inches became almost like a foot and a half or more to be able to come up that high. What's happening in these valleys is that it's an amplifier. So I'm not sure how, how many inches of rain they got, but I think they got dumped with like maybe close to a foot. So that foot comes down the valley and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And so suddenly, you know, 12 inches becomes 12 feet very easily or 20 feet or something like that. And, and this is the thing that, you know, hurricanes just shock everyone is that in Florida, the biggest problem with hurricanes is storm surge. But when you go up the coast, especially inland, everyone believes they're insulated from a hurricane. But if that thing becomes a rainmaker, even several hundred miles inland, including, I think um, it, there was, uh, I think back in the, in the early aughts, 
um, a storm, I can't remember the name of it, that hit Vermont. And it was one of these storms that was like going to threaten New York City. And everyone thought it was going to be a big deal and kind of missed New York City. And remember, everyone's like, oh, you know, once again, false alarm. They get us all worked up about nothing. And it's like, well, talk to the people about Vermont because then that storm went up and it stalled over Vermont, dumped all its rain there. And Vermont is very mountainous. That's why it's called Vermont. You know, it's it's green mountains, basically, in French. And bridges and everything just like that were just washed out. And then all the roads that go down those valleys are washed out. So that is the danger. And now with all that knocked out, you need some way to be able to communicate. And the people need to be able to communicate. Um, and that's where you need the portability because, uh, you know, if you're going to coordinate anything, communication is key and radios may not be uh, up to the task. So you need to have something, something, especially if you need to show video and everything like that, things of high bandwidth. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, even before you show video and stuff like that, just, just for first responders and emergency services to communicate with people, if the towers are down. Um, you either have, I mean, if, if you are prepared, you'll have like some sort of a backup walkie talkie or, or mm-hmm. a radio, you know, but not everybody. Or, you know, Th- not that's everybody only over that. like a small radius, a couple of miles, unless you get some yeah, sort of repeat exactly. or something like that. And that also depends on the topography. Yes. You know, how, yes. How, how and and a lot of times it, it, it can't geolocate you. Um, yeah. It doesn't have enough bandwidth for you to be able to show a uh, video or images or something like that. Yeah. And I'm just looking at these pictures that uh, this is from a video that Elon shared on his on his uh, feed on X. And it just reminds me of the mountainous regions in India where I was mm-hmm. when the disaster happened. And it's just, there, there, there's no chance that any infrastructure can survive in a situation like this. Roads, bridges, telecom towers, you know, houses yeah. are washed away. Nothing, nothing. Um, I, just, just so, I'm, I'm curious, does um, Starlink's direct to phone the emergency services was it activated for for this region for I, Florida, North Carolina? I, Do you know? I don't. I don't know. I, I didn't test it. I don't know if they have enough up there to get much bandwidth, because you know certainly in this case it may work a little bit, but you have so many people, it's hard to tell um, whether it would have been working. Um, very close yeah. to getting it to to work. Um, yeah. I know one. But of I would imagine, like, what, I mean, that's another that's another brilliant yeah. use case, right? I mean, that's yes, what it's meant absolutely, for. absolutely. That's yeah. so, so. That's ideally going to be it because then it means everyone has like a mini Starlink in their pocket at all times for at least right. text to say, exactly. you know, uh, I need help here for it to be able yeah. to get out and then have some. And they're, they're and it can geolocate you. Well, so I mean, even if yes. you're kind of stuck in the, yes. in the forest or yes. the mountainside, yes. You know, yes, and, and we'll probably find out how much it was used right now. Now, now we know a lot of Starlink had to go in there and that there were some um, some relief organizations that brought in large amounts of Starlinks, and, and the problem was getting the account activated. And so more or less what Starlink did is like, in this area, any Starlink that's in that area will just, you know, don't worry about the account. We see you, you'll be active. Um, and so that's, you know, an, another thing to, to help you know, speed up the humanitarian response to be able to make sure that these things are going to work when you set them up. Now, the the one thing I would recommend uh, now, especially with, with, with everything that's happened, is to be prepared um, pretty much, I you know, when it comes to Starlink, I don't leave home without it now. So um, my last trip to California, which was two weeks ago, um, I tested to see the portability of, of the Mini and brought it with me. And uh, turned out I, I did need it out there because I was in a lot of places in California, like the national parks, where there was no connectivity at all. And even along the Big Sur, which is Highway 1 along the coast, you would think that there would be cell phone coverage along that because it's a very popular route. And once you get south of, of Carmel-by-the-Sea, it's like you, you get nothing. So Google Maps is going on memory at that point and can't tell you anything. And you're trying to check stuff and nothing is going. You drive all the way down to Big Sur, turn around, come back. Nothing, 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 nothing. Yeah. And then finally, you decided to pull over to get an update. Pulled out the, the Mini. Not only did it work, but that was the, the moment I found out that I got the golden ticket for the RoboTaxi event. You know, at that point, you know, we, we had no idea before and was able to live stream it with it. Now, mixed feelings. Like, now, yes, mixed feelings. Because like I say, after that, whew, Everything went, you know, that was like on the 25th and the 26th, yeah. the hurricane happens. And yeah, yeah. so things have been quite, <laughs> talk about an October surprise. So do you, do you know if, if FEMA has um, Starlink, if they, if they're using Starlink? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. No, so yeah. they're using it now, but they weren't earlier. They may, they may have had it uh, because 
what, Every, everyone has, I imagine has, being, I, I imagine yeah the nature I've of, seen so many people that have it and first responders everywhere where have it um well we're like you know also also in my town they, they they've had it for a while just for uh, emergency services um a lot of companies right. that have visited that are working remotely going to construction site like in solar fields and stuff like that and even at mm -hmm. a naval shipyard like yeah. they all had Starlink out there because they didn't have any other way of being able to, to get interconnectivity. Now, right. um, so this this is my normal laptop bag that I can fit my 15 inch laptop in, and right in there, whoop, you can see I slipped in my mini. So it's very easy to fit in there, and to show the number of items you would need with the mini. Okay, so it's about the size of a laptop. Right. And you need a power cable um, right. to, to go along with as well. Now, it, it does come with a power cable, which is like, I don't know, 150 feet, and you got to plug it in. Okay. So if, if you have access to 110, you can go ahead and bring this, but it's a little bit heavier. Uh, what I did is I ordered from Starlink. You can also get this one, which has a USB-C uh, output port to it in the barrel jack that you would normally use to plug in to the base here. Right. So you just you know open this up, you plug that in, and right. now you need a power supply for that. Yeah. Power supply also fits in the bag, and that is just this little recharging brick right here. That's it. Wow. This can supply up to 100 watts of power. Right. So it has a USB-C output, which is the reason we're getting the USB-C here. You can get bigger batteries, of course, and those batteries will have like 12 volt out and they'll have 110. But if you want something that's portable that you can put mm -hmm. in your simple backpack, that will be it. Then you just plug it in and you go. And this will give about two and a half hours of okay. continuous use. So, so you can also use it intermittently. Um, yes, as as needed. Stretch it so, out. Yeah. Yes. And then, then you just that, take but hang this on. So this, this in a pinch. In a pinch, you should also be able to plug it into your car, into your Tesla. You know, as as, as far as I know, uh, it's probably not till the current model year that the uh -huh. USB-C output is is what they call USB-C PD, which can output up to 100 watts. Most right. of them can only output 10 watts, which is not enough because the, the dish is taking 40 watts. So right. what you can do is you can buy this same version here, a barrel jack, which goes into the Starlink Mini, and then you get a 12 volt, and it will work at any mm -hmm. car. Except the Cybertruck, because the Cybertruck doesn't have this anymore. The Cybertruck, this is all you need, because the Cybertruck has the ports. And I think, you know, the the new performance version of Model Three has the PD output. I've confirmed. I tried using this in my Model Y, and it didn't work with this, but right. it did work with this. Okay. Right. And now, what you have to do is look at the Starlink Mini. Um, for the specifications on the barrel jack. This is a 5.5 by 2.1. Mm -hmm. Okay, they come in all sorts of different sizes, but just remember that five, when you go ahead and order that, uh, whatever you're going to, or get this from the Starlink page. Now, <clears throat> I tried getting a barrel jack uh, from like a third party on, on Amazon that that has this thing, and it, it doesn't work. For some reason, they you know the resistance is too high or, or something about the connector that they don't work. So <clears throat> you can get these barrel jack ones, but they won't support up to hundred Watts like this does. So this is a thicker cable. It also has this, uh, uh, um, what, what is IP? I think 54, maybe even 56 rating on there. So when you put it in there, it can get submerged and you don't have to worry about anything going bad. Oh, great. So even though the cable is a little bit longer than I want, mm -hmm. I think it's like 15 feet or so, five meters. Um, there are shorter ones you can get, but they don't work. Okay, <laughs> so they, they're they're not able to supply it. So the best thing is is to actually go ahead and get it. And hopefully, Starlink eventually gets one shorter. So, right. um, but still, that's not bad. And the other thing is, everyone's kind of wondering, say, like, okay, I brought this and I brought this and my laptop and everything else, and I went through TSA in both directions and without an issue. Um, oh, they, they got upset. They got upset about my tiny Swiss Army pocket knife, <laughs> and I did check whether you were allowed to bring you know, this lithium ion battery onto the plane and, and you can bring this, this, this is, I think 2000, 20, 20,000 milliamp hours or whatever that weird thing is, just basically means a hundred, a uh, hundred watt hour uh, is actually allowed. I think bigger than that, they won't let you bring it, but this is pretty right. good because okay. you can recharge your laptop. You can recharge yeah. your phone. 
and you can run the Starlink Mini for like two and a half yeah. hours. I mean, a, a, back a, BD, hotel a USB BD should it. work with your laptop. It should work with Starlink. Yes, yes, so yes. And, everything. and so there's a variety of uses for it. And it's so slim, it fits in there and you can bring it wherever you want. So, of course, I'm bringing it with me on the trip tomorrow, of course, just to have it because right now I don't want to be stuck somewhere where you don't have communication because you'd be surprised. It doesn't have to be a disaster area. Like I say, yeah. um, just driving down the Big Sur, nothing along there. Yeah. You know, and then you go out to Sequoia National Park and you go out to Yosemite. Yeah, forget it. You know, there's, yeah. there's no connectivity out there either. Yeah. And of course, let's not forget that um, there's more bad news. Well, hopefully yes, not as yes, bad. Yes, yes, But this is the latest from uh, the National Environmental Satellite Data and Information Services. And you can see that um, that funnel out there on the, along the East Coast. It's not looking good. Yes. Yeah, That that's not. And uh yeah, and, and again, you just never know when you're going to need them. Uh, another friend of mine, Kenneth, he had also Starlink Mini with him when he was driving up the national parks. And, and oh, I mean, it's it's twisty and windy getting up into Yosemite yes. and everything else. And as soon as they got in the park, there was a car that had flipped over because it went around one of those corners too quickly. And everyone was oh, out gosh. trying to get uh, 911. No one was hurt, but, you know, the car just kind of like okay. cornered a bit too hard. And they're trying to get a hold and no one could get a cell phone signal. And wow. he just pulled over, popped out the mini, and was able to, go. you know, over the Wi-Fi yeah. use the 911. So it's not a bad thing to have, along with your first aid kit. You know, <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. this, you'll get you'll get connectivity quite easily. I think a lot of people are realizing that this is part of your essential, you know, yeah, kit yeah. to go to yeah. in emergencies. And uh, I, I think it's it's very important. You know, there was there was a tragic yeah. story. I think it was like well over a dozen years ago, where an editor from CNET um, went. I th- think up um, somewhere in, in Nevada over Thanksgiving weekend from uh, from the Bay Area. And on the way back, there was just a freak snowstorm and they got a little bit lost and they weren't sure where they were. And then, then they were stuck uh-huh. and they were stuck in the middle of nowhere for days. And, you know, and they were you know, trying to find them and they couldn't, you know, no cell phone signal, absolutely nothing, couldn't do anything. And then they were, it was getting very cold. They took the tires off, set the tires on fire just to try, you know, to get a campfire right. kind of thing. And um, uh, eventually, I think he died of exposure. His family was rescued. And all you can just imagine if, if this technology had been there at that time, yeah, he would have been able to cut it out and say, we're stranded. Yeah, just, just where we so are. many lives. The, res- and so the many rescuers were looking for him, you know, and, and yeah. this was, you know, this is like an editor at CNET that, you know, they're really into technology and stuff like that. Right. And, yeah. you know, to, to hear something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, fighting some I mean, way. but you can only do as much as technology allows you to. And now, right at that time, you could at, at the time, yeah, at that time, the technology was okay. I think smartphones were just around at that point. Mm. They're just starting to come out, but this, you know, the infrastructure for supporting them. And you'd, you'd be surprised right. how much of the country does not have cell phone coverage. And one of those places yeah. is like my yeah. living room and my bedroom, and yeah. a few others no, like no, that. Which is which is yeah. why you need Starlink. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and yeah, and, exactly. and and I'm I'm curious. Do you think now there's going to be a, a greater push from, um, well, mobile operators and service providers in America to kind of learn from this? And and so I think T-Mobile has a tie up with SpaceX for emergency services. Right. Do you think there's going to be? I a, think they uh, all. I think it's set up that they will all work. So it's not exclusive to. Oh, it's kind of a uh, default. T-Mobile. Yeah, I think. I think. They're setting it up right now that if you have to call nine one one, it will. It doesn't. They don't care whether it's, it's T Mobile. Uh, for other reasons that would not be nine one one, I think it would have to be T Mobile. But uh, it's not going to be an exclusive. But it's starting out with it. But my understanding right. is that um, you know if if the capability is there uh, and you, you do nine one one in the middle of nowhere, it, it will work. Now, I think what your phone does is it's it's constantly searching for different cell towers and everything else. Mm-hmm. Always trying to find the, yeah. the path of least resistance and which one's going to work. And if it's pinging and can't find something, it will then amplify its signal and try to, you know, then connect to the satellite go, to go mm-hmm. ahead and do that. And at that point, it will then try to get across. And then your best chance is that <clears throat> text would probably be the best. Yeah. Because it's it's um, you know the amount of data that has to go there's a lot less than when you have to do with voice. Yeah. So it could potentially work with voice and maybe for video. But the thing is that within any particular area that is picking it up, it can only do a couple of customers. It can't do a lot more. I mean, even right now, the, the main Starlink that within a particular cell, 
they're supporting maybe a hundred customers max within there because of limited bandwidth. And, you know, normally, you know, so in a very sparse area, that's not a problem. Very rural area, it's all right. When you get into a suburban area, it's like, wait a minute. I mean, you're talking about thousands or tens of thousands of people that yeah. would like to have access and it can't do it. So Starlink is a supplemental um, technology. It's not going to replace the fiber and everything else that's out there. For sure. Uh, you, for know, sure. You, know, you know, fiber is, is definitely much faster in up and downloading. So if you're a person that has to up and download lots and lots of data, you're going to want fiber. But the thing is, you got to live near one of those yeah. backbones in order to get that. And, and where yeah. we are, you know, it, it's horrible. How, I mean, they, they keep on working on, on upgrading the cable system here and it just doesn't work at all. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. I don't consider yourself rural or anything like that. It, I shouldn't have to, um, to, to use Starlink, but it turns out it was the best decision I made because yeah. I didn't realize. And how correct, me, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but for the direct to sell, I think, um, even even with the very kind of first iteration of the service right now, uh, you can transmit your exact GPS coordinates in addition to yes, that. yes, yes. I, I think it, I think it should know that that it, it would figure that out. Yes, yeah. So then, yeah. if you need to be rescued, that's mm -hmm. because I mean it's it's I mean not everybody would know, uh, yeah. and and of course it depends on the the frame of mind of the person at the time. In case of emergencies, you're Kind of problem. And also remember, it right, depends on the coverage. Is that I'm not sure how many right. satellites I have up there right now. So right. it may be that you don't have full time coverage. That it may be that you, you're going to keep on trying to send the text. And it's going to have to know that there's nothing there, and it's going to have to ping like every every couple of minutes until it's able. Yeah. A satellite's overhead and say, like, oh, okay, I just got the message. I'm relaying it. So it may be uh, a little bit slow at first until they get more and more of those things. So part yeah. of it is the satellites have to be really big with these really big sensitive antenna that are able to receive the signal. Uh, and then you got to get enough of them up there. And I think they're, they've been launching quite a few. And, this is, these uh, are the gen two and uh, the gen two satellites, right? Yeah. It, I don't think they're the gen two yet. I think they're still like the 1.5. Oh, I see. Unless okay. they rename it because the, the gen oh, two the, the bigger is one. so big, it has to go yeah. and you know, it, it cannot fit inside of the, the fairing of the Falcon nine. So the, the real True. the real Gen 2s that they want to have. So when they realized that Starship would not be ready yet, they came down with a, a slim down version of the, which I think they call 1.5 right. or something like that. But right. it's very much right. like, you know, it's got the, the, the laser connection between the two and I think slightly bigger antenna that they're going to be folding out. Yeah, um, I mean, but, all the more reason for the FAA to get its act act together, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I'm so thankful that you and your family are okay. I mean, you've had some losses, but you know you can always recover that. But it's great yep. that you're fine. Um, there are many who've not been so lucky, and and my heart goes out to yes, them. And I'm yes, yes, exactly. Them in our prayers. And exactly. um, think about them. We're we're fine here. We're gonna get by yeah. fine. I mean, I'm not sure how. Yeah. You know what the house is gonna look like when we came back. It was already a pretty muddy mess. You know, the, it's like yeah. This just this coating of weird silt that gets dredged up from the bay or something like that. It almost felt like concrete, and it was just so hard to to get it off. You know, it's like you kept yeah. on spraying and spraying, but eventually we got enough of it pushed out, and now it's like, and it's just going to be coming back in again. So I'm not looking forward to that. And I and I, I watched your um, the old video, your live stream on X. Um, I watched a replay of it, and uh, it was good that you pointed out that. Learn to, to tie a club hitch and tie your boats down. <laughs> yes, yes. That I there were a few times where neighbors called me up and said, Oh, can you tie my boat down? And then I go around and it's like, Where's your ties? Oh, we don't have any rope. Can you find some rope? I'm like, why do you don't even have them on your bus? Like, oh. And yeah, so all four corners, you, you gotta have them. And it doesn't matter whether it's up on a lift, you've got to do it. And as you can see, my boat would have floated away. You know, it I it I think it just raised it maybe an inch or two. And then it shifted forward. So, yeah. but, but it that's was enough just enough. Free, you know? Just enough. And and we also had a jet ski there that was also tied down on it. And I think it was enough to lift it up and move it forward. Because I thought the jet ski, you know, if it was like really high, the jet ski would have been basically submerged. Um, right. and, and it wasn't submerged. So it's like, oh, okay. So it was just enough to kind of lift it a little bit. But this this one is probably going to submerge those. Uh, and yeah. I'll let you go. I know you oh, have a lot yeah. to to prepare for. Yeah, uh, so this might you. be the last time you see this backdrop. Yeah, well, hopefully know. not. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah.